Hello, I'm Pastor Sylvia A. Thomas, and today I want to talk to you about the black presence in the Bible and why it matters. I'll be using my own written notes so that I do not forget anything that I want to tell you today. I also want to let you know that this message does not come from any kind of a racist standpoint. I encourage you all to listen with an open heart to the message that the Lord Jesus is giving to the worldwide church today, to the Christian church. Also, this is a mini lesson. There is way too much to this message to say it all here. If you would like for me to come to your church or your event and expound on these important lessons for the worldwide church today, then please contact me by email at Sylvia Thomas Ministries at gmail.com and that's S-Y-L-V-I-A Thomas T-H-O-M-A-S Ministries M-I-N-I-S-T-R-I-E-S at gmail.com for speaking engagements. According to archaeological findings, there is strong evidence that the first human beings to exist were Hamitic African Negroid people. Going all the way back to the Garden of Eden, we, we must look at where it was located. Where was Eden located? Genesis 2, chapter, uh, Genesis chapter 2, uh, verses 10 through 12, describes Eden and what rivers surrounded it. With careful research, you will find that Eden was located in the heart of the land of Ham, which is known as Africa today. And uh, the land of Ham was a, a great uh, uh, mass area that encompassed all of Israel and uh, some of the Middle East and uh, was a great territory in antiquity and at the beginning of time uh, in the earliest days. Africa was called the land of Ham. We also know by the uh, many references to Egypt and Ethiopia that the first people written about in scripture were black. There are approximately 736 references to Egypt and 41 references to Ethiopia in the Bible. The Egyptians were black and the Israelites were black and were often mistaken for one another. They were only identifiable by their attire and their culture. There was also a plethora of different peoples in antiquity such as the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, the Philistines, and many others. And uh, you know, actually the mixing of all of the Israelite people with these people, even against God's um, will for them to mix, is how uh, I proclaim that all black people throughout the world are Israelites today. But that will be another message that I'll uh, go over at a different time. Most, if not all, of the notable men and women in ancient biblical times were black, Negro people as you see today with darker skin and kinky hair. Among these black people are Adam and Eve, Abraham and his offspring, Moses, Noah and his family, and many others. Scripture says that the people were one people. There was only one race of people, one people, prior to the great flood that destroyed all mankind except uh, the, the, the flood ex, uh, um, destroyed all mankind except Noah and his family. So prior to this great flood in which Noah and his family were saved, people were all one people. After the flood, Noah's three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, repopulated the earth, and it was from these three black sons God created the different nations of people. And you can read about Noah and the repopulation of the earth in Genesis chapter 10 and 11. Throughout the Old and New Testament, there is clear evidence that most of the people were black, in particular, the Hebrew Israelite Jewish people 
of whom the whole Bible story is written about. And when I say Hebrew, Israelite, and Jewish, I am using those three terms synonymously, interchangeably, as the same people. Why is this important to understand today? Why is it important that we need to understand our black presence in the Bible? Jesus the Christ, Yeshua, our Lord and Savior, is making an appeal to his people today, his treasured people, black people all over the world to know who they are and who he is to you. Jesus being born through the Hebrew, Israelite, Jewish line of people was also a black Negroid man, but his people, we do not know him that way. His people have not been able to see the truth in scripture until this day. Until today, we have not been able to see this truth in scripture. Jesus today is taking the veil off of our eyes so that we can know the truth. And you can read uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 13 through 16, and it'll tell you about this veil. There has been a veil over our, our eyes, and only Jesus in these latter days could take this veil off of our eyes. And so uh, read about this in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13 through 16. And it will, uh, as I said, tell you about this veil. You see, Jesus wants to turn his people's situations around. And as he does, all Christians will be beneficiaries of the blessings that are coming to our people. All Christians are heir to these blessings. So no one is being left out, but the blessing is coming to the Israelite people and the Israelite people are black people all over the world. Jesus wants his people restored. The Bible tells us over and over again about this promised restoration to come to God's people. But black people haven't known that it was they who are the recipients of this promised restoration. God says he will restore us back to the way we originally were when we were the most admired people on earth because of the way God had blessed us. You see, the Israelites in the, in the very beginning, they were a very uh, extremely blessed people. And many people wanted to worship God because of his blessings to the Israelite people. And God wants to do that for us again. He wants to bless us in that way again. We will again become the become God's standard for, the, for leading the way for how he is to be worshipped and served and how we should live. He wants us to live a certain way. He wants us to serve him a certain way. He wants us to worship him a certain way. And we will again become that standard for people to understand how to worship God. This restoration is a turning back to observing our Hebrew, Israelite, Jewish culture, customs, and rites. It is also a restoration. Uh, it is all. It all. It is also a restoration in turning around our condition around the world. He is going to bless our neighborhoods, improve our education, bless our finances, and all of the other areas that we suffer in. God wants to turn these things around. But like I said, He is going to do a restoration of his people to come back to our Hebrew Israelite culture. This is scriptural. And he wants to turn our situations around. He wants to bless our neighborhoods, improve our education, bless our finances, and all other the areas that we suffer in. He is going to restore our land and bring us home some, again someday. This is scriptural. He says that he will do this. He says that he will bring us home and restore our land. All the things that we've lost as a people through slavery and uh, through the way that we have been treated uh, all over the world, um, uh, just despised all over the world in, in uh, many places. 
Uh, he's going to turn our situations around. This is what the scripture says. There are many Old and New Testament scriptures concerning the restoration of Israel, who we now know are black people all over the world. And uh, just a few of them, you can read about this restoration. Uh, I would say Google the restoration of Israel, and uh, you'll see many scriptures come up. But uh, just a few of them I'd like to point out are Deuteronomy chapter 30, Acts chapter 15, verses 14 through 16, and Romans chapter 11, verses 12 and 15. So my people, I want you to understand that this is not about getting entangled and following the law of Moses again to the point of ignorance. Uh, back in, in antiquity when the law of Moses which was originally given and uh, throughout the centuries, um, you know, the people did not know Jesus. They didn't know his grace. They didn't know his love. They didn't know the freedom that he gave us from the law. But uh, then and still, though, there were many scriptures that God gave to the Israelite people that he said to observe forever. He wanted you to teach your children. And he wanted this to be something that your generations would always uh, know and understand is, is uh, certain commands that he has given us, which you will learn about as you learn more about your, he your Hebrew culture and your Hebrew rites. So this is an act of the Lord today to his people to come closer to him. You know, this is why he's drawing, he, he wants his, 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 our Hebrew culture, our Israelite culture again. He's drawing you closer to him. He too was an Israelite man. He was a Jewish man. He wants you to know him as, uh, he wants us to know him as our Messiah and our King, King, King Jesus, King of the Jews, King of his people. He came as King of, of Israel. And um, so that's what he, that's how he wants his people today to understand and know him. He wants us to be reunited with him in a way that we have not known. He wants us to understand the commands that he gave us to ex gave, gave to our people exclusively because of his covenant with us. And he wants us to know his irrevocable love for us. He wants us to know that he gave us a superior way of living so that we could be a light and shine for him among all men. All of these things are coming back to us. Yes, we have been denied the right to know who we were because of the sins of our ancestors. But today, these latter days, the Lord is teaching us who we are and we must also teach our children who they are. And so we need to Praise the Lord today because he is doing this great thing. This is a great day that we're living in. If only we would stop and listen to the voice of the Lord and hear what he is saying to his people and the church today. So I encourage you, do like I did, you know, read the Bible, read it from Genesis to Revelation and you will see, you will read your story. Your story is the Bible story. And you will understand more about what the Lord is saying to his people today. So that's all I have for you today. If you want more of this great message uh, that God has given me for the Worldwide Church today, then contact me at sylviathomasministries at gmail.com uh, for, speaking, for speaking engagements. And also, if you have any questions, you may contact me there. Also, check out my other YouTube videos and subscribe to Sylvia A. Thomas on YouTube. God bless you and your family and God keep you in his care. And remember, Jesus is Lord and King.